Good morning, everyone. We are extremely grateful that you are here for this momentous occasion. It really is a sweet occasion, and I really have sensed that even in the fellowship this morning. There's tremendous excitement uh, on our campus for what the Lord is doing and the things that are unfolding in our midst. You know, in the midst of so many Christian schools that have struggled, we recognize that God has poured out a tremendous blessing on the campus here at the King's Academy. And so today, as we recognize the sacrifice and hard work of Mrs. Beaumont, we just are thankful for all of you who've given faithfully to the King's Academy, but I'd like us to give her a round of applause as we begin. I also want to just welcome her today, Mrs. Beaumont's family. There are a lot of those in the house today, and so her son is here, Greg, and his wife, Sharon, and we welcome you here today. We welcome her daughter, Cindy, and husband, Danny. And then she has some grandchildren in the house that we get to see all the time on the campus of the King's Academy. Holly and her husband, John, and David and Amber. We're thankful for them and their work at King's. And we're always grateful to see Jane Loveland. And many of our board members have welcomed uh, you this morning, and so we're grateful uh, that they could make it for this occasion. You know, when I think about what God is doing on the campus of the King's Academy, I think about a uh, word that was recorded by a minister in the 19th century in New England. His name was Edward Hale. And he said, I am only one, still I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do something that I can do. And that's exactly what Mrs. Beaumont has done. She's lived a faithful life and she's giving, given tirelessly of herself to make this library better. And she's partnered with a friend of ours that's in the house and that's Mrs. Nordine, who was with us for 25 years at the King's Academy and we're thankful for her service and partnership. So today we welcome you and ask you to enjoy uh, the festivities of the day and the dedication. We are so grateful you're here. Well, good morning. I appreciate all of you being here today. My name is Randy Martin. I'm the president here, and we are very pleased to be able to introduce the Rosemary Beaumont Library to you today. Um, God has given us great weather. I wrote this a number of days, and by faith, all things are possible. <laughs> so we have a great morning here today, great weather to, to have this uh, festive occasion. He's also given us a, an impressive newly renovated library. I have to thank the volunteers that worked on this and had the vision for this space. Um, our students are enjoying this very much. It's created 30% more space for students to use by the renovations that happened. We have collaboration stations all over this area and we see kids come in in groups of three, four, and five that every day take advantage of those, those areas that we have. And um, we also have expanded our hours, so we now have kids in here in the mornings, and we have kids that we have to kick out at 5 o'clock in, in the afternoon, tell them to go home. So God has continued to bless us. He's blessed us with great enrollment this year, and continues to bless us and bless us and bless us. But today, most importantly, He has blessed us with a worthy namesake for this academic hub of our campus, Mrs. Rosemary Beaumont. So we're, we're very happy to honor you today. Mrs. Beaumont has been a quiet supporter of the King's Academy Library for 28 years now. And when she started volunteering here at the library, Ronald Reagan's presidency was just ending at that time. Uh, the movie Rain Man was the blockbuster movie at the time, if you remember that. The average cost of gasoline was 91 cents. Um, TKA was still located at the Cherry Road campus, isn't that amazing? And I was just in high school. So. <laughs> So while Mrs. Beaumont has volunteered here for almost three decades now, and many times she was here three and four days for like six hours a day, so she's been here a lot of hours, there are many students on our campus that might not even know your name. But they do benefit from all of the work that you've done over the years. And, and every day that they come in, you have touched probably most of all of these books. Um, I did talk to Pam McCarty, who was our assistant librarian, and had the pleasure of working with you, and she's now my assistant, and I asked for some things about you. And she said that every time a new book would come in, Mrs. Beaumont had to touch that book about 10 times to stamp it, to label it, to cover the book. She had to go do research in the Dewey Decimal System of where to number that in, in the sequence. So when you look around, 
In Pam's estimation, she has touched probably 80% of the books that you see around us today. So that is quite a testament to what you've done here. You know, I love how Christ turns the wisdom of this world on its head. And in Matthew 19 and 20, he says several times, and interestingly enough, uh, in yesterday's elementary chapel, the fifth and sixth graders learned that when God says something multiple times in the Bible, we really need to pay attention to that. So what he says many times in Matthew 19 and 20 is he says, the first will be last and the last will be first. And so today I feel like we are honoring that kingdom principle by honoring somebody who served first and never sought the limelight. So it's really cool that our board of governors have decided to name this after a servant here at the King's Academy. And so I'm very grateful that they made that decision. You know, the King's Academy, Mrs. Beaumont, is a better place for the work that you've done here. And so I'm very grateful that and pleased that for many years to come, students will know your name. They won't just know the benefit of your work, they'll know who contributed to this library becoming the place that it is. So, so today I wish God's richest blessings on you and your family and on this library and on the King's Academy. So we have a small gift for you for all of your years of service. Could never pay you back for what you've done, but very appreciative and happy that we have the Rosemary Beaumont Library now, right? And now I'd like to turn the program over to kind of a family member of Mrs. Beaumont and a very important person that has been our previous president. Uh, Mr. Jeff Loveland has served here and he's seen many changes. He was actually the one that helped us build this campus. So the, the bones of this place that we've renovated is because of this man. And I, I am very grateful to be able to fo be following in his footsteps. So Mr. Jeff Loveland. Thank you. In case you don't understand the relationship, <laughs> uh, you know, I know everybody gets confused by the Loveland family, <laughs> but uh, my, uh, my brother, my older brother, married Mrs. Beaumont's daughter, and uh, so, yes. <laughs> if I were asked to describe Rosemary Beaumont, uh, some words that would come to mind for me would be loyal, dedicated, thoughtful, humble, and a servant. Uh, Randy already mentioned the word servant, and I wanted to kind of focus on that part because I don't think we have any better example than the Lord Jesus Christ of being a servant. If we look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, it says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. So what an example he has been. And uh, you would think, one would think that if the Lord Jesus was going to be a man, he would have been a born a prince and appear in splendor, but quite the contrary, he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. So servanthood is an important characteristic for us to follow as Christians. Why I think it's so important that we are naming this building after a servant, and what an example I think that is to our students for years to come. One of the uh, points I think of servanthood that many people miss today uh, is that so many wish to be compensated for their time served. Uh, and I'm very glad to tell you that all the years and hours and gas that Mrs. Beaumont has spent serving the students and teachers at TKA, I have never once received a request for any kind of payment. I don't think we could afford it. <laughs> and uh, the relationship with uh, Mrs. Beaumont over the years has been um, obviously a close one and uh, she has, just as a side personal note, she has over the years given 
my mother and father's grandchildren a Christmas ornament every year until they graduated from high school. Uh, my children still decorate their trees with these uh, ornaments and they all three were very sad when they turned 18 because <laughs> at Christmas they were no longer going to get the ornament. And uh, last night my wife did a little bit of the math. Uh, she came up with 342 Christmas ornaments over the years because there were, there were 19 grandchildren. So she has been a blessing in many ways uh, in my life and uh, to the people at Palm Bible Chapel where uh, many of us uh, in this room, others I see who grew up there and uh, it's been a blessing. So Mrs. Beaumont, I cannot think of anyone else that deserves this honor today as much as you do. Thank you so much for your dedication to the King's Academy and for blessing us with your 28 years of service. Thank you. I have the privilege of formally reading uh, the plaque of dedication and I'm honored to do that. Very often you tour through colleges or hospitals and you see names on buildings and you think why, who, how did that come about? And often it's a significant gift and often it's also significant service and it's, it's such a special thing today that it's a combination of a family's giving and also the service of Mrs. Beaumont that we're able to name the library today. So thank you uh, to John and Holly for your giving, to Danny and Cindy for your giving, for the whole family's years and years and many, many dollars of giving to the King's Academy that we're able to name this building, the Rosemary Beaumont Library. So would you come up as I read this? And Holly, do you want to come up with her? Mom's just noticing that they look pretty together. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, ladies. If you'll take that, the plaque, and reveal it, and I'll read it. It says at the top, says the King's Academy, and there's the crest. The Rosemary Beaumont Library. Mrs. Rosemary Beaumont began her career as a Columbia University trained nurse before finding her passion for library sciences. She spent 27 years in the public library system before retiring and beginning her volunteer work at the King's Academy. For the past 28 years, she has spent countless hours serving the students of TKA and passing along her love for the Lord and passion for reading. Always quick with a smile and a kind word, she represents the very essence of a servant's heart, as we've heard. On this 26th day of August 2016, <coughs> the King's Academy recognizes Mrs. Bowman's years of faithful service to the Lord and to the TKA library. Let's give her a hand. And Mrs. Beaumont is going to say a quick thank you, and then Holly is as well. <laughs> well, it, it's just overwhelming to be so blessed with this award for doing something I just had fun doing all those years. <laughs> I really miss it, it's, you know, but it's time to stop. But I do thank you and I came, started doing it because I had grandchildren here, David and Andrew and Holly, and I have five great granddaughters here. So it has just been a blessing and, and the Lord has blessed me so much and I hope he will continue to bless the King's Academy. Thank you again. So I said to Glenn this morning, um, who's speaking? Because I feel like I should, even though I don't like to. But um, I couldn't let the day go by without um, just saying how thankful I am for the faithfulness of my grandparents. I have um, Nelson and Jane Loveland and Jack and Rosemary Beaumont. And when you look at this campus, you see their faithfulness to the Lord in um, Christian education and their dedication. And if there was one word I would use to describe my grandmother, it's faithful. And she was faithful to her husband, she's been faithful to her family, 
She's been faithful to her church. She's been faithful to the Gideons. She's been faithful just in her whole life is just characterized by a quiet, um, deliberate faithfulness. Last night, Mr. Raines talked about uh, the Israelites when they were ready to go in the Promised Land, taking stones out of the Jordan and building a memorial. And when I look at this library and when I look at the Fine Arts Center and I see my grandparents' names on that, it's a memorial for me to mark their faithfulness and um, all that God has done in and through them. And so it's a, it's a lot to live up to. And I said last night, if I could just follow in her face, in her footsteps, and be as sweet and kind and faithful as she has been, then I will consider that success. Thank you, Grandma, for your faithfulness to this school and to our family, and we love you very much. Holly, you do have big footsteps to follow. <laughs> Rosemary Beaumont and Nelson and Jane Loveland. Very big footsteps. In any case, I am asked to do the dedication prayer. I just wanted to say just a couple words, and, and that is that as I was driving over here, the, the thing that occurred to me was that 30 years of service is more than a financial gift. A financial gift can be re-earned, but when we give our, our time, Time is something we can't ever re-earn. So when we decide that something is valuable enough to invest in with our time, particularly 30 years, we know that this is something really worth investing into. And I'd like to encourage all of us who are here to consider not only just supporting the school financially, like many of you have, but to continue to support the school with your time and your devotion and dedication because it's it's through these gifts of both time and finances that this school has grown to the school that it is but it's not just us it's it's really all about Jesus and and uh, God's blessing and it's because of God's blessing that we have people here that feel that this is an important uh, ministry please join me in prayer Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to bring glory to you and to thank you for the faithfulness that you have blessed us with throughout the years at the King's Academy. You brought us from meager beginnings years and years ago to a beautiful campus that's 60 acres strong and, and we have all these beautiful facilities and, and this wonderful new library. Lord, thank you for Rosemary Beaumont, thank you for her family and thank you for the financial support as well as the, the gift of time. We know that children crave just time with their parents and it's time that is our most valuable resource because it just is irreplaceable. Only you are the master of time. But Lord, we are servants to time and, and what we choose to spend our time on is, is what we truly value. And we thank you for Rosemary Beaumont. We thank you for this library. We pray that this library would be the hub of the campus, that it would be a place of refuge, a place of safety, and a place of gathering for the students, that it would be a place where they, they study hard and they fellowship. And we just pray that you would bless all that goes on in this campus and, and particularly in this library, Lord. Lord, as we go forth today, we just pray that you would give us all a, a heart of, of servanthood and that we would all just find our passions as Rosemary Beaumont has and that we would spend our lives doing things that are of eternal significance. In Christ's holy name I pray, amen. amen.